started. Uh, well, first of all, thank you folks for being here today. Uh, my name is Tim Ranzetta. I'm one of the co-founders of NextGen Personal Finance. And thank you for taking on what is a very tricky topic, cryptocurrency. So I hope you leave here with really two thoughts. Because there's a lot to cryptocurrency, and I think we often get lost in the details. But I think at a high level, here's what you need to know. This is more a speculation than it is an investment. I think it's if we use the word investment, then suddenly people are equating it. Oh, is this like buying stocks? Is this like buying a mutual fund? No, it's unlike anything like that. The second thought is there are no consumer protections when it comes to cryptocurrency. So let me just the cryptocurrency world had a shock two weeks ago. Anybody want to drop in the chat what that shock was? It's three letters. It's a three-letter company. Uh, that you saw a lot of Super Bowl. Yes, actually, it was FTX. So what? Ha think about it this way. Prices go up and prices go down for the most popular cryptocurrencies. The most popular one is Bitcoin. Buy a but there's like 20,000 Bitcoin. So think of it this way. You have the risk of the price going up and down. What FTX was, was the equivalent of a brokerage, right? If you want to buy and sell stocks, you can't do it through a bank account. You got to go to Vanguard or Schwab or Fidelity or a whole bunch of, you go to Robinhood. What happened with FTX was they were an exchange. So they were the equivalent of you would go to FTX to buy and sell crypto. Unbeknownst to you, they were taking your assets and throwing it across the wall to an investment fund called Alameda that they ran. Well, Alameda ran into some problems. And then suddenly people said, I want my money out of FTX, and they didn't have the money to back your account. So what happened with FTX had very little to do with the price of Bitcoin and everything to do with a corrupt operation. And suddenly there aren't protections in place. There's no FDIC for crypto exchanges. The regulars, regulators kind of fell asleep. So I want people to understand, like when you go in and make an investment in cryptocurrency, it's not only the risk that the price of that Bitcoin, if that's the uh, crypto coin that you're gonna buy, it's not only that price is going up and down, but the exchange, there's no protections in place if the exchange, if you go to the exchange and say, I want my, okay, convert my Bitcoin to dollars, there's no FDIC insurance. So that was the big wake up call this week is like, you know what, risk is what you don't see. And the risk and, and the person FTX was led by, he went by a three letter acronym, SBF. Sam Bankman, I forget what the F stands for. I know what a lot of people who have accounts with him uh, think that F should be, but he was the poster child for how to do crypto. He was on the cover of magazines. This was the best guy ever. Well, it turned out he was running a corrupt operation. We'll probably spend quite a bit of time in jail. And this will be in the news for a long time. And it's really hurt the credibility of cryptocurrency because it opened people's eyes to like, I thought there was some order or I thought people ran real operations here. Unfortunately, what this week, I think it really destroyed credibility and trust. And ultimately the world of finance beyond cryptocurrency is about trust. So it's gonna take a long time. You're gonna see a lot more news, but my hope today is just kind of give you a basic primer about crypto by looking at resources that we currently offer. So first, I want to start with a question. So this is up on Nearpod. So again, if you're just joining us and wondering, click on that Nearpod link. All right, got a question from Dexin regarding Coinbase. Yeah, I don't, I, I'm, I'm not here to kind of give advice what's a good, Coinbase is another exchange. So clearly, you know, people are asking where are, what are the other major exchanges and are they doing the same thing? I cannot vouch for them. I can tell you that Coinbase is a public company while FTX was a private company and a public company has to make more disclosures. They didn't even have audited financials at FTX. Here was a company that investors were valuing at $32 billion, but because it was a private company, 
there was no requirement that he had audited financials. So I can tell you Coinbase is a public company, but I cannot vouch for any exchange. Um, okay. So my question to you up on Nearpod, I see Melissa has answered. What's your best guess? What percent of 18 to 29 year olds have invested, traded, or used a cryptocurrency? All right. I'm seeing a bunch of people joining us. So again, please go to the chat, click on that Nearpod link, because that is where the presentation is happening. And I, I'm not going to solicit, an, I'm not going to provide an opinion of where crypto goes from here, because uh, that's not my job. My job is to kind of show you the resources we have with a goal of educating young people. If you're joining us late, I said, I hope you walked away with really two we can get lost in the details of crypto. I think we, we need to highlight one. It's a speculative. I wouldn't call it an investment. It's a speculation. Shouldn't put any money into it that you can't afford to lose all of it. People have got a wake up call. A million people bought, bought and sold cryptocurrency through FTX. They are likely to get zero back. So it's a very, I, I don't even want to call it an investment. It's incredibly volatile. Um, and the second thing is there's no consumer protections in place. So there isn't an FDIC that's going to bail out everybody who bought and sold crypto on FTX. That's not there yet. You know, my point is regulators are very slow at regulating new financial products. If they're not going to regulate, we got to educate. So please go ahead and put in the chat what you think. What percentage of 18 to 29 year olds? Because this is very popular. Your students are probably talking about it. What percent of 18 to 29 year olds have invested, traded, or used a cryptocurrency? Yeah, I'm just asking for a percent here, folks. So drop that in the chat. So I got 30%. All right, here is the answer. It's 31%. So one third of 18 to 29 year olds. Now that number is probably going to decline. Again, I think the there's going to be there's a tremendous loss of confidence in crypto markets now because this has really sent a shockwave across the industry. So NGPF, the organization I'm the co-founder of, every day we come out with a new question of the day. So these are great bell ringers to to capture students' attention. All right. So our my goal today is to go through five resources. We're going to go through a pretty rapid clip here. And the hope is like, you're going to see resources we've created in a cryptocurrency mini unit. The goal is to kind of ultimately the success of PD is can you bring these resources back to your students? So when they're talking about cryptocurrency, we can have an informed discussion about it. So here is our approach. We're not taking a side here, folks. Students need to think critically about this. Our goal is to inform and educate. We're not going to say it's a scam. We're not going to say it's going to go to $250,000. We're not touts. Uh, we're, we have to give students information and let them, because the problem is if I go up in front of them and say that, okay, boomer, you don't get it because it's digital currency, like you're going to lose them. And so it's important, like, let's give them resources to think critically. And, you know, bringing some balance so that when, when we talk about the hype around it, and again, there's a lot less hype today. Um, crypto, many coins have disappeared and gone to zero. A lot less hype around it, but we, we got to make sure we're getting them to think critically and actually look at arguments pro and con. So again, we don't encourage someone to invest or not to invest. And it's ever changing as I just mentioned to start off what's happened in the last two weeks with FTX. So we're going to look at a variety of different resources because that's what our curriculum is about. It's let's give students a variety so that they're never bored. So you're going to look at infographics, lessons, a current events product we have called FinCap Friday. We're going to look at a decision tree in terms of how, how you might think about whether or not to invest. And then we'll have a video also. All right. We are going to start with a video. So you can go ahead. And again, if you're not on Nearpod yet, go to the chat, click on the link I just dropped in, and you're going to go ahead and play this on your own device. Here we go. So go ahead and play this video on a device, and then we'll have some questions for you after. It should be finishing up. Or right, if you're done, if you can just drop that in the chat, that will help me know when to move on. I'll, otherwise, I'll just do that in about 10 seconds. All right, thank you. If 
five, four, three, two, one. Awesome. Okay, so here are the key things I want you to keep in mind. Uh, it's this idea, and it's funny, right? They talk about decentralization. Hey, there's no middle person in the middle, and yet where you buy and trade cryptocurrency is not on the blockchain. You're buying from a an exchange, so there still is a middleman kind of making it making it happen. Because what happens is obviously when it's apparent that this could be a big market, well, financial service firms jump in and try and figure out how do I get a piece of it. So the blockchain, I think in the end, the blockchain is going to be the biggest innovation here because the way it's set up, think of it as an accounting system or a ledger system. And that's kind of where all these transactions get, get tracked. And so most of the losses that have occurred have not occurred because of their deficiencies in the blockchain. Most of when you hear about people getting scammed or you hear about people losing their crypto, it usually has to do with somebody hacking the exchange. It's not blockchain is this technology, I think, is something you're going to continue to hear about, whether it's through cryptocurrency or it's other applications. How does Bitcoin get created? So one of the things people like about Bitcoin is there's a limit as to how many Bitcoins exist. So it's not, you can't just run the printing press and say, we're going to create millions of Bitcoin. Instead, it's it's released at a very slow pace. And so people always felt like, oh, this is going to be great because while the US Federal Reserve can run the printing presses and really, you know, create inflation, well, block crypto is going to be great because there's, a, at least with Bitcoin, there's a limit as to what can be produced. Um, the miners are the ones who actually create the new Bitcoin by solving these problems. And I think it's like once every six minutes, a new Bitcoin, but there's a, there's a natural limit to it, which is 21 million Bitcoin to be produced by the year. I think it's 2130. So it's a very slow, methodical pace. And that's one of the things people thought would be great about the most popular cryptocurrency, which is Bitcoin. Um, Question? All right. So that's kind of the, the basics uh, of Bitcoin and kind of how it worked. So you had a chance to watch this video about the basics. What's up on Nearpod now is an opportunity for you to type in. What's a follow-up question you might have your students answer after watching the video? What do you hope students get out of watching that? And so what's the question you would ask to try and solicit that? answer. Let me give you a minute to do that. All right, I see three great questions up on the board. Feel free to continue to to add those. So, you know, this question of how do you earn money? How does Bitcoin pay off, right? When you invest in a company, right? You there's two different ways you can profit when you make an investment in a company. Number one is it's, you know, buy low, sell high. There's a price that you pay for a share of stock and you hope to buy it at a certain price and you hope to sell it buy low, sell high, sell at a higher price. The other thing companies do though, about 80% of the largest companies in the US do something called pay a dividend. That's a cash, that's cash you get, usually paid out quarterly. And so the business is generating profit, they take a portion of those profits and they share it with investors. And so you can make money. And that kind of is a nice thing to have as an investor. You're like, okay, while I hold the stock, if I hold it for years, I'm gonna get these quarterly checks called dividends. That with Bitcoin, it's strictly the price of Bitcoin. Go, you know, buy low, sell high. That's the only. Uh, that's the only way. So it's not a business. There's not. It's not throwing off cash. It's like gold to some extent. Some people have referred to Bitcoin as digital gold, where it's just. In this case, it's a digital asset versus gold, which people perceive as an asset, and. Hard to under, hard to know what the underlying value, right? With a company, you can look at the profits and say, okay, we should value this company at 20 times their earnings. With Bitcoin, it's pure speculation. It's kind of, there's a market out there, there's a buyer, there's a seller, where do they meet? That's the, that's the price. Um, so kind of very different from a company where you actually have something concrete called profits. It looks like somebody has put on a, uh, I'm trying to follow this here. Cornell, explain to me what we're looking at here. Hey, I'm sorry. I just I, I just look for you know to enrich your presentation with the GIF. Yeah, <laughs> just no, for, the GIF. for crypto crash. 
Okay. Crypto crashed under the GIF and he gave me a few options. I, I chosen that one, not for any particular reason. Sorry right. if I'm breaking no, up. I was the, just trying to follow. I was trying flow. to figure out what asset it was and what was, uh, no, no. What was yeah, crashing. Yeah, I, I couldn't see it very clearly because uh, I need to uh, zoom in, but sorry. No worries. Okay, so that is a video. Let's take a look at some infographics. So again, this is something we sprinkle throughout our curriculum. Uh, I'm going to give you three choices. So you can choose an infographic that gives you a brief history of cryptocurrency. You can learn a little bit more. Maybe you, that Bitcoin mining is still a little bit confusing to you. You want to dive in a little deeper there, or you want to learn how to buy cryptocurrency. So what I'm going to do is give you three minutes to review. And then I'm going to put another collab board up and you are going to share one thing you learned because you can't see all three of them. So you're going to share one thing that you learned about the infographic you're looking at. Okay. So we'll go three minutes. Here we go. All right. Take another 30 seconds and then I'll learn about each of those three topics. All right, here we go. If you go back to Nearpod now, go ahead and share your thought, please. Uh, yeah. Choose number one, number two, or number three, depending on which, or maybe give the topic of the infographic you looked at and then one thing you learned. If you can just go ahead and drop that into Nearpod. So once again, yeah, please go ahead and share. Um, so I see some people putting it in the chat. would love for that to show up on Nearpod. Thank you, Melissa and Cornell. Yeah, Melissa put a fun fact up there. The first purchase was two pizzas. And I think when Bitcoin was at its peak, that was hundreds of millions of dollars of value. I hope they enjoyed that pizza. I think it was Papa John's too. So another currency, Dexon highlighted Ethereum, uh, which is another currency, uh, cryptocurrency, and it's tied to something called smart contracts. And I think you're right on there, Dexon, in terms of saying that's another uh, use case that could be something that we talk about a lot more than cryptocurrencies, this application. Um, and Ethereum also went through uh, a recent change that makes it a lot more energy efficient because that's another criticism of cryptocurrency is it's a huge user of electricity. All right, cool. Thank you for sharing those insights. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at some of our lessons. So I'm gonna give you some time to explore. Uh, Cornell makes a good point. Mining crypto certainly got a lot more complex because it's, you want to talk about that, Cornell? Why, why, what makes mining crypto so expensive? What are the things, if you wanted, if you wanted to set up your own mining operation, so to speak, right. what would, what would the cost be? I, I don't know the, the exact details, but I, I've seen, you know, some videos, some presentation that, you know, we're, we're exposing the need of high performance, um, you know, energy, um, highly using type of computers. And it's going to take days, if not weeks, to be able to find anything. And obviously, you know, your power bill will, will uh, convince you to give up or, I don't know, invest in something else. Yeah. I, I'm not good in it. I, I, I don't know. I'm using Robinhood and they're, they're not allowing, like I put in the chat to buy any crypto for the state of Nevada. I don't know if there's a state regulation or something. It's kind of like interesting, right? You can go to Vegas uh, and gamble, but you can't buy I crypto, I guess, on Robinhood. Yeah. They they probably have to go through, it sounds like there might be some regulations in, around that. Um, and my guess is with FTX, you are going to see a ton more regulation around this because people right. are, when people lose everything and wonder like, okay, who's protecting me? Um you're going to see them respond pretty quickly to make sure that there's some back backup. Because again, if you were on these exchanges, and if you looked at the timeline, you saw a lot of instances where exchanges got hacked and people lost everything. And the fact that it's still continuing, I think Mt. Gox was the first one that really got hit. That was hundreds of millions of dollars. Um, this one is likely to be upwards of $8 billion. I think that's the number people are throwing around is the whole in FTX right now is $8 billion and there's a mil, over a million uh, investors there. So we're likely to see more of that. It's going to get harder, I think, uh, for these exchanges to operate unless they're really, there's something real behind them. Um, okay, so here's what I would like you to do. Go up to Nearpod now, uh, click on that cryptocurrency page 
that's going to take you to our website. And so what I'd like you to do, so again, click on cryptocurrency should take you. So our website again is ngpf.org. This is one of our mini units. Um, so it's under, if I was to walk you through the process, if you go to curriculum up at the top of the, the navigation bar, you'll see mini units. And then one of our mini units is cryptocurrency. So what I'd like you to do now, choose one of the lessons. So the lessons are on the left-hand side. The activities or supplementary materials are on the right-hand side. So we have, you know, 8.1 is what is crypto, 8.2, digging deeper, 8.3 is crypto in action, 8.4 is speculating in cryptocurrency. Um, so what I want you to do is just choose one of those lessons and be ready to share because we'll do a breakout room and have you all share one of the resources you're excited to use with your students and one question that you had as a result of going through that lesson. Uh, I'm going to give you six minutes to do that, a little more time so you can explore, and then we'll do a breakout room uh, where you're ready to share those two things, a resource and a question. Ready, set, go. And thanks, thanks for sharing that fact, Dex, and that Coinbase um, is another exchange where yeah, you do have the ability to buy many of these, these coins. All right. I hope you enjoyed exploring one or maybe even more lessons. Just to give you some more tips on how to use those lessons, at the bottom of each of our lessons, we have a do more, learn more. Um, so going through all of the lesson resources and then the do more, learn more resources can help you see if there's additional or supplementary uh, resources that you want to add, maybe you want to swap out. One of the important things to, to be aware of is our lessons are all customizable. So you can, you see they're in Google Docs, you can just file, make a copy and make changes as you desire. If you want to learn more about Bitcoin, we have on demand, our PD, professional development on our website, there's a basics of Bitcoin, which is basically a self-paced Nearpod. You're going to progress through usually takes about an hour and you'll earn credit and gpf has a program where you actually track your hours so you can actually earn credit and that credit can translate into getting swag uh, which we send out on a quarterly basis we also have blog posts uh specific blog posts which might have more up-to-date information as this is a fast-moving market and then lastly we've got yeah search tool if you want to search for Ethereum, you want to search for Bitcoin, use our website search tool. You'll see everything we have on our website because we do have a lot of resources. All right. I'm looking at the time here and I'm realizing, why don't I, uh, rather than do a breakout, why don't I just have folks, because of our time limitation here, uh, I'd love to know Folks want to unmute themselves um, or drop. We've just got a small group here so we can kind of keep it informal. Yeah, would love to know the answer to the question uh, that I asked before, um, which is, you know, which lesson did you look at? What's a resource you're excited to use with your students? And one question you still have. Um, I looked at uh, lesson two and the activity that I liked was the play game where they were looking at sort of guessing the roller coaster of Bitcoin, because um, that leads to a lot of discussion on things that could affect it and what's happened and possibly predicting in the future. Um, and I don't really have any questions on yep. cryptocurrency. Yeah, no, I think that's a great analogy. Thank you, Melissa, for volunteering uh, and starting us off here. Uh, so this idea that, especially if you haven't experienced what the ups and downs of own, owning a volatile, you know, one that goes up and down, um, quite a bit. Games and simulations can be effective at kind of giving students, even though it's low stakes, right? It's not money, but still, if you get into the, the game, you can really feel that excitement as well as the disappointment. We're coming out with a new game, actually. It'll probably be early December called Crypto Royale. So it'll be one of our arcade, new arcade games. And I think, um, again, we're trying to simulate what does it feel like to invest, knowing that there's an incredible amount of risk there, not only with the individual coin, but also with these exchanges blowing up. All right, who wants to be next? Thank you again, Melissa. Okay, uh, my question is uh, after look the crypto in action. I have been investing in crypto for a long time now. 
I start early. So I'm I'm doing well. But but just like you said, if the if the the the, the exchange go go bankrupt, then I'll probably go with it. Yeah. Uh, but as as long as the crypto itself I'm doing really well because I bought only. And I didn't buy buy those new ones, except the except the sheep sheep. Yeah, that's uh, just like you said. So my question is: uh, After reading all this, uh, is it? Do you think uh, crypt, uh, cryptocurrency is gonna survive? <laughs> I w- I would be lying if I told you what I knew, um, because I, I think that's the thing we have to like. I can go on TV and I can say because there are people out there saying, "Oh, crypto is gonna go to two hundred fifty thousand dollars." They're wearing fancy suits. They have PhD degrees, but nobody knows, and anybody who does is lying. I mean, that's kind of the bottom line is where it's going to, and that's why we have to teach that it's speculative and that it's not, you got in early Dex. And I think that's the key point, right? You got in early and it's had a tremendous run up and now a tremendous run down. It got as high as 68,000. Now it's a Bitcoin I'm talking about specifically. And now it's about 16,000. Yeah, Uh, I got got into the Bitcoin when it was only 2,000. $2. Two dollars. Uh, two thousand dollars. Two thousand. Wow. Okay. So you've yeah. Done... I got into the different was only uh, two hundred dollars. Yep. So young minds are definitely young boys, especially, are geared toward this get rich quick. They go online. They go to TikTok. They go to YouTube, and there's a ton of people touting the virtues of crypto. The problem is, it's we have to make it clear to them that it's a speculative investment and it's a lot of these coins, there's 20,000 coins out there, right? There was Dogecoin was really hot because Elon Musk was saying, yeah. you know, to the moon. And so the thing went up and then the thing crashed, right? So just understanding it's, I hesitate to even include it in an investing unit because uh, it's not an investment. It's a, it's a gamble and you can lose all your money and most investments like okay if i go out and buy uh, an index fund that owns the 500 largest companies in the us which you can at a very cheap price like i'm not going to lose all my money you know in fact if i look at history the market says it's going to uh, the history says it's going to go up 789% a year now am i going to get rich quick no but am i going to go broke no like and so this investment has a real opportunity to go to zero and i think and it could be the coin goes to zero or it could be the exchange yeah run I, I, by I really ethical people that. and goes to zero so diversification is is absolutely uh important but I, even if you divert like i could have owned 10 coins i could feel like oh i'm diversified in crypto because i own 10 coins but i'm ex- my exchange is fte it didn't matter because i lost everything I, and I was not on FT, FTX. I'm sorry. I, was, I wasn't I was on FTX. The other reason we really need to talk about it is because you had all of these spokespeople, Tom Brady, Steph Curry, everybody giving it legitimacy. You have to do your own research. And, I think and the unfortunately, government that led a lot of people down this path. Yeah, I think uh, government should come some regulation towards uh, cryptocurrency and also also the platform to the exchange. Yeah. Um, the problem, I think, uh, one is no regulation. Second, uh, too many crypto coins on the market. Yeah. There, there are many new ones. I do not see any futures at all. Yeah, no, I mean, it's, they're gonna, it's like somebody, a lot of people equated to what happened if you're old enough to remember the internet bubble bursting, right? Like the internet is, became a real thing but there was speculation. There was a huge shakeout. A lot of these websites went to zero. These companies weren't worth anything, um, but there was something lasting there. And the, so the question becomes like, okay, what is going to come out of Bitcoin? It's not going to be 20,000 coins worth something. The last crazy thing that happened at FTX was um, they created their own. It wasn't a coin. It was something called a token. They created their own token. So imagine this. <laughs> and I think this is where skepticism comes in. Imagine this, you run a company, you say, I'm going to create a token and we're going to call it the Tim token. And I'm going to create 2 million of them. 
And then I'm going to trade that token to myself and I'm going to say it's worth $10. I'm just going to say it's worth $10. Why did I choose $10? Well, it's a trade that I made or I convinced somebody else and now I have a market value. So those 2 million Tim coins are now worth 20, you know, multiply that by 10, it's worth $20 million. That literally happened with FTX. They created a token, they traded it with them, they created a bunch of them, they traded it with themselves or somebody who was an interested party that manipulate the price and suddenly they create this asset out of thin air. Ponzi scheme, yeah, that's exactly what it sounds like. Um, okay, sorry, we got sidetracked there, but I think it's really important to understand kind of what's swirling around today. Okay, so we're gonna look at something called FinCap Friday. This is our weekly, every Friday, we come out with a new current event. And this is by Created Produced, written by Yanelli Espinal. So if you, it's a Kahoot plus a video. So what I'm putting up on Nearpod now is you can go ahead and click on all the, click on and watch this video fooled by the hype. Sound familiar, huh? We get some, <laughs> you know, any of you watched the Super Bowl in January, I think that was probably the peak of, uh, it was actually near the peak of where prices were for the various crypto currencies. And uh, these celebrity endorsements, as Yanelli said so eloquently, is they're getting paid millions of dollars to promote. And unfortunately, too many people follow them like lemmings over the cliff. So this, you know, again, our goal is to inform young people, getting them to think critically and this was the same thing that happened with Emacs. It happened with FTX. FTX had their name on, I think it was the Miami Heat Arena. So they were really trying to show that, hey, we are part of this movement. We are, let's plaster our name. In fact, I went to a Warriors game. Uh, I'm in the Bay Area, San Francisco Bay Area. And I went to a Warriors game and they were giving out bobbleheads that had FTX on it earlier this week. I think it's the last promotion you will see with from them because they're bankrupt now. Um, but we got to get students to think critically about this. So just because a celebrity or show them the commercial with Matt Damon, fortune favors the brave, like um, they don't talk about risk. Risk, ain't, risk isn't sexy and risky does not get people interested in crypto. All right. So again, our FinCap Friday. I put a link in the chat. We have over 150 videos. So every current event you could possibly think of. And it's a video, it's a quiz, and then it's some follow-up questions, get the conversation going. And then we give you even more resources on how you can extend your learning. We are getting close to time here. So I'm going to skip uh, the decision tree. I will give you a link. Um, I'll give you a link to the resource. But one of the reasons crypto, and we can think of meme stocks, right? Remember GameStop, AMC, remember all those stock, Hertz was bankrupt and yet people piled into the stock and drove it up. Like what drives that and what drives a lot of behavior when it comes to investing is something called FOMO, fear of missing out. And I think you see that in spades with crypto because we got social media, which is an accelerant here. So all of a sudden I'm seeing friends of mine making a lot of money or, you know, you don't hear people talking about losing money, right? So all you see is the positivity of like, oh my God. And, you know, crypto, there were people who made a lot of money investing in crypto. Um, they're also, the sign of a bubble is kind of most people tend to get in at the highest price. Um, and so they end up the losers because you got to inflate the bubble and at its peak is kind of, is when you are attracting people who are late to the party. Um, so we talk a lot about behavioral, um, the behavior, the psychology behind how did crypto get to be what it is? And it's largely driven by this very human instinct called the fear of missing out. It caused a lot of pain for us to see other people doing so well. And so we don't do the research. We just follow along because we want to be part of something bigger. All right, let me share that link for those of you who want to look at that resource. It's a decision tree. It basically takes you through the process of how you would think about whether or not to invest in crypto. All right, so just wrapping up again, the goal, I hope you walk away from this conversation with really one point to students. When they come to you and say, is now a great time to buy crypto? 
Number one, do your own research. Number two, recognize it is a very speculative, and I don't even want to use the word investment. It's a huge speculation. In other words, the pr I can't tell you what drives the price of Bitcoin. What's the inherent value of it other than what the buyer and seller decided it should be worth, right? Like I can't point to underlying business. I can't point to dividends that it pays. It's pure speculation. And don't invest more than you could lose because you can lose 100%. The risk is not only in owning Bitcoin, the risk is where you buy and sell Bitcoin because there are not consumer protections in place today. My hope is in a year, there'll be more protections. It's only going to be good for the industry because people will be more comfortable. But there, this is a crisis of trust that we haven't seen before. If you're interested in this topic, um, I'm actually going to be doing the next session in this in this room is going to be around behavioral economics. So we're going to get into psychology, not talking about cryptocurrency, but just generally the psychology behind the money decisions that we make. We also have a unit, a complete unit on behavioral economics. We do certification courses. So you want to learn more about cryptocurrency, Yanelli, who you saw in the video, she teaches a, a certification course, which in this case is nine hours over three weeks. So in other words, you'll be doing three out, you'll be doing four hours, two sessions in week one, two sessions in week two, and then, uh, two hours in week three, including an exam. Um, oh, Melissa, you did it. Tell us how it went. Um, I don't fully remember because I've done a lot of the certifications through NGPF, um, but it was really good at giving the, like the background information, talking about the different types, going over the difference between um, the coins and tokens and all that stuff. Cool. So again, we do these certificate, everything we do, I should have started by saying everything NGPF does is at no cost. Um, so our curriculum, which you had a chance to explore today with the cryptocurrency mini unit, as well as our professional development, all done at no cost. So if you would like to receive, actually, I think you've already gotten a survey. So I will not um, drop this survey in, but... If you like what you see on our website, and again, we don't charge for anything, folks. We want to get personal finance into every classroom in America. And the only way we can do that is to offer everything we do for free. We've created, uh, I've created an endowment to fund our operations. So um, if you want to learn more about NGPF or get access to our answer keys at NGPF.org, you'll see in the upper right, we have the account button. Go ahead and click that and complete the information that we ask for. We'll get you verified probably on Monday, and then you'll get access to the answer keys. But you can access the rest of our website in the meantime, folks. So the only thing that having an account does is it gives you the opportunity to access the answer keys. All right. What is the certification for? Uh, it's, I think, many states... It kind of qualifies as CEUs, continuing education units. I think teachers appreciate having it on their resume. I think it's, we've seen a lot of teachers kind of take the certificates that we provide uh, to their administrators. And if you, if you complete six of our, we have 11 certification courses. If you complete six of them, we identify you as a distinguished educator. So I think people just see value in the recognition that I've invested the time and effort to become more knowledgeable about personal finance. 